are we live? Are we live? Let's have a quick look. Oh, let's refresh that. Are we live there? Oh, we are. Let's have a quick look. Oh, let's mute myself. There we go. So, morning, everybody. Now, we're going a little bit old school today because I haven't got any um, filming people here with me today um, through lots of different reasons. Um, so we're going a little bit old school today. So I'm doing it on my phone, I'm afraid. So that's why we are, we're tall and, we're tall and thin today rather than short and wide. Um, so good morning if you're joining us. Thank you. Today we are going to be talking about, oh, Morning Kirsty from a grey Wellingborough. Oh, not very good. Actually, the sun has just come out, she says, peering off, off camera, round the corner of the bookshelves. Sun has come out. I think it might be a nice day, which is really cool. Um, so good morning, everybody who's watching today. Thank you for joining us. Um, oh, I can actually see people who are watching now because I'm watching it on my phone, which is really cool. Morning, Karen. So today what we're doing is we're getting shirty today and I want to show you our new pattern. This is the Cesario shirt. So um, it's basically a unisex one. Now I've made this shirt for Charlie for ages actually. Um, so it's kind of adapted, but you can, anyone can wear it. It's a kind of a unisex sort of thing really. So this is our kind of ladies version um, and it does have, um, cuffs that you can change the um, put, uh, contrasting fabric on which is brilliant actually this is one of Charlie's shirts so again there's loads of different things you can do with a shirt um, they are a bit more of a technical kind of project but and because they're they're basically very simple you've got a two-piece collar so a collar stand and a separate collar you've got a front a back a yoke sleeves plackets, cuffs and pockets but that combination gives you limitless ways of kind of customizing the shirt and making it for you. So for example on this shirt that I've got here of Charlie's I've actually put a contrast fabric on the underneath button stand. Now the back of it is the same as the shirt as the main part of the shirt but you've got that little bit of a detail and the pockets have flaps which i've also put a little bit of contrast underneath here so there's loads of different ways you can add different contrast so i've also put the inside yoke is a different color the inside button stand is a contrast fabric so but the whole collar itself is all the same fabric so i love this and he gets a new one whether he likes it or not every christmas and birthday so which is quite a nice way now i'm thinking because we've got father's day coming up next month so this would be a really lovely present to make for the man in your life now this is our women's version so we've kept this a little bit simpler now again what we've done is put a contrast on the button stand but we've also put it on the other side as well so you've got rather than having just one bit you've got two bits of contrast we've also put the contrast on the button or the, on the collar stand and we've put it on the underneath collar so there's loads of different ways you can actually mix and match this I absolutely adore it I really do now it has let me undo the there we go so it's quite a technical one but there are lots of things that I mean, if just literally follow everything step by step and it's really nice and straightforward to do. It's one of those slow sew projects. So this is something that you might want to do over several evenings or a couple of weekends. The placket is another nice one. It's got that little kind of gabled end to it, which I think is really nice. So you've got the little point there on the placket. Now, again, if you are making a shirt for a guy, then you might want to make this a little bit longer and actually put a tiny button inside the placket itself. It's another option. You could have all the cuff, um, kind of one color, one sort of fabric if you prefer. 
um, but it's a really nice way of using up little bits of scrap of fabrics, little small prints that you might want to um, use as a contrast or something like that with it. So I love it. Now the other option, to make it a bit more of a casual shirt, you can always put a little tab in there as well, which is nice. So those are kind of, you know, traditionally you'd hang it up on a hook or something like that, but I quite like that idea. It's, um, it's not really a formal shirt thing, but I quite like it and it makes it a bit more of a casual shirt. So I think that is a fab new pattern. It's one I've been wanting to do for a while because um, I do like a technical project sometimes. You know, sometimes it's really nice just to you know, bash out a, a quick Regan or a Julia or something like that. But then at other times you want something that you can really kind of focus in on and um, just spend a little bit more time with it really. So I can see we've got comments. I'm just going to duck down and read the comments because I can't see them otherwise. Um, oh, good morning, everybody. Kirsty says, loving the shirt. Been measuring up the hubby for one. Perfect. Morning, Julia. How are you? Morning, Karen. Morning, Donna. Morning, Sue. Morning, another Sue from sunny Worcestershire, Gloucestershire border. I know it's beautiful, isn't it? Good morning, Moira. How are you? Or Mari, sorry. That's brilliant. Morning, Linda. Morning, Maria. Lovely. Thank you for joining us. So, although we've got the new Cesario shirt, and does anybody know where Cesario's from? It is a Shakespearean character. I'm going to just throw that one out there. Answers, not on a postcard. You can put them in the comments below on the, um, on the Facebook Live, if you like. Um, but I thought we'd also have a look at some of our other shirty type patterns. So... I'm wearing my Eleanor today, which has a shawl collar, which is integral to the, the kind of body of the shirt. So we've got our white Eleanor here. This is our sample one. Again, I love this. It's a really casual kind of a shape, but you've still got that kind of shirting detail with the back yoke there. So again, if you wanted to, you could put the inside yoke you could have as a different colour if you wanted to, just to give yourself a little bit more interest there as well. Um, another shirty type one is Hippolyta. Now, more of a shirt dress this time, but it does still have a two-piece collar. So similar to the Cesario, um, you've got that two-piece collar there. So you could, if you wanted to, just have the collar stand on and take off the collar itself, which would give you a completely different look. Um, and that's a really nice one that works with the Cesario shirt, actually. And again, just turns it into something completely different. So the Cesario pattern has lengthened and shortened lines on the sleeve and the body parts. So it makes it much easier to adapt for different people. And the sizing for it goes by the actual chest width. So when you're thinking about um, making one up for whoever you're gonna make your shirt for, then what we've done is with the chest measurement goes basically from armpit to armpit sort of thing. So that would be your chest measurement. We've also done the collar measurement as well. So um, I can't remember now, off the top of my head, I think something like a 15 inch collar, it equates to um, a large, but double check your measurements. The sleeve length also, it can be a little bit long for ladies, so you might wanna think about shortening that as well. But all of the garment measurements are on the pattern. So before you decide which one you want to make up, you might be fine with the chest width for whatever size, but just check the length in the body and the length on the sleeve. Now, I don't know, it, like me, I quite like an oversized shirt. So this is a beautiful one, actually. Some of the pictures that we've put up on the website of Claire wearing it looks great because it's a proper kind of oversized sort of shirt, which I think is really lovely. But again, you can make it to fit you a little bit closer if you prefer that kind of um, shape of garment. But just bear in mind that there aren't any darts in this. Now, you could add darts if you wanted to, but it is just a flat shirt front because there's quite a bit of ease there already in the pattern. So, oh, we've got a few more comments. Oh, Sharon's popped up links. There we go. 12th and up, there we go. Lovely, I knew you guys would know who Cesario was. 
That's brilliant. Yes, it is from Twelfth Night. Viola and Sebastian, when they get shipwrecked, she um, assumes the identity of a bloke. Why wouldn't you if you're a woman in a strange land on your own? And Cesario is the name that she uses. So you're right there. What creaking downstairs? <laughs> That's fine. So we might not have um, slapping clay today. We may have a squeaking puppy. She's upstairs at the moment, and I know that if she can hear me, she's going to start to panic. She's thought she's not flavour of the month today. Well, flavour of the day actually. She's already had a wee on um, Sharon's rug. So um, yeah, she's not not flavour of the month at the moment. But never mind. So fabrics for shirts. That's what we're looking at today. Now, obviously, linen is going to be top of the list because a nice, beautiful summer weight shirt goes with everything, doesn't it? You can wear it over little t-shirts. You can just wear it as a long kind of over shirt. You can do all kinds of different things with it. So the fabrics that I want to show you, I'm going to move my camera a little bit so that we can see. the. There we go, because that's what we're looking at today. Um, uh, what type of poppy did I get? We have a little black Labrador called Olive and she is 10 weeks old. So um, she can get her, in she, no, she's having her injections next week. So we can let her out, yes. Oh my God, it's worse than having a baby. Have any of you had puppies? What a nightmare is it? Honestly, I was seriously, I was nearly gonna give her back on Sunday. I just totally had enough. She was such a pain. Um, Oh, morning, Amy. For once, you're not sewing. Well, Amy's one of our diploma ladies. We had the diploma graduation at the weekend, actually. So, yeah, you've got a bit of downtime now, Amy, haven't you? Which is quite nice. I hope you're enjoying it. So, fabrics. Now, I've started. Hopefully, some of these are a little bit kind of unisex, a bit more kind of for guys rather than girls. It depends on which way you want to go with it, really. I love this fabric. This is our Hunter's Linen. It's a beautiful weight, so any of our linens would make up fantastically in the Cesario. They would work brilliantly. It's light enough that it's not gonna be um, too heavy and weighty, but equally, it's got enough substance so it's not going to be too kind of light and fly away. So this is perfect. I mean, we've also used it for the um, overshirt in the book, Sewing for the Soul, which is that one. So that doesn't have a two-piece collar. This has got what they call a convertible collar. So this is just one collar piece. So you have to have it as like a, like a revere, or you can have it buttoned up, she says, trying to do the buttoning up thing. There we go, like that. So you've got that kind of a look. The, um, so this is, the, this is our navy laundered linen, but it, again, it would work really nicely in this dark kind of hunter's green um, I love this there is a hack coming to, to turn the um, shirt into a dress actually so you've got a shirt waster shirt dress kind of thing which I think this would look amazing actually or if you're making a shirt for a bloke then I think this would be perfect as well so this is our hunter's green laundered linen let's pop that over there now another linen, and I think this is beautiful. I think somebody might have already made an overshirt in this actually. This is beautiful. It is, she says, trying to find the label, there we go. Sage green oversized check linen. This is beautiful. Now, again, it's a check, so you are gonna want to look out where, for where your stripes and matching is gonna be, but if you're doing a slow sew project like a shirt, you're gonna to wanna to take the time to do it and get your fabric sorted properly, aren't you really? So that's a really, this is a beautiful one. And the weight of this is just gorgeous. Again, this made up as a shirt dress, I think would look amazing, I really do. I love this. So this is o Sage, Sage Green Oversized Check. So again, Sharon will be sticking all the links up for you. She's actually minding Olive at the moment, so, um, Hopefully there's nothing else getting eaten in the studio, up in the offices upstairs. Oh dear. Um, oh, oh, Maria says, you've got a sprocker puppy, nine months old, was held with biting clothes full of holes. Oh dear. 
Um, oh, Karen, your daughter's just got a fox, oh, fox red. Oh, they're lovely. Actually, Olive's dad was a fox red and he's beautiful. So, might you, Ava says you might get the house cleaned. <laughs> That's wishful thinking. Surely there must be time to do other things, really, than cleaning, you know. Um, let's just have a quick look and see. Oh, there we go. Yes, more people guessing Cesario and where that's from. Cool. Now, this is a nice one. This is almost like a linen chambre. It's a linen mix and it's almost like a, it's a kind of like a pale olive grey. Yeah, it's actually a grey. Yeah, it's a grey. It's a grey warp and a white weft but I think this is beautiful this is really lovely so if you just want something that's a really nice kind of basic kind of color gonna go with um, all kinds of different things actually I could imagine this with a pair of black jeans actually would look really nice or um, a pair of chinos if you're making it making it up for a guy then a pair of chinos with this would look really nice so this is Linen mixed chambray in pale grey, but it has got a slightly greeny tone to it, which I think is rather nice, actually. Now, another option for the Cesario is to make it short sleeve, And again, we're going to do a hack for that in the studio as well. So if you're looking for something that's a bit more of a short sleeve summer shirt, then I think this is gorgeous. This is a seersucker stripe um, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's got lots of different kinds of greens in it, along with a pale blue and a kind of a rusty orange as well, which is rather nice. So again, you are going to want to watch where your stripes and how your matching works. But again, I think that would look amazing. So this one is called Green Check Cotton Seersucker Gingham. And again, Sharon's put, oh, there we go. She's beat me to it. She's put the link up already, which is brilliant. So this, I think, would be lovely as well. That would work really nicely. So that's our a couple of green ones, sort of olivey type greens. Um, oops, let's just quickly check. Oh, Debbie said, Deborah says, you've got a 12 week old Cavapoo called Rollo. Oh, so cute. I feel your pain. I know it's just a nightmare. Everybody keeps telling me, it'll get better. It'll get better. I'm like, really, really? She's already chewed one of my Crocs. Now, I should admit to having Crocs really late, although apparently they're getting trendy again. But there we go. So, back on to more linen. Now, I love this. This is beautiful. This is a um, sketchy stripe. It is a Merchant and Mills fabric, and it's absolutely gorgeous. This, I think, if I undo it, there we go. So, you can see that it has, it's an, a kind of an off-white, but it has that really lovely, fine, stripe going through it this would make up beautifully as a granddad shirt actually just with um a kind of a life, nice big kind of oversized one but just having a little granddad collar rather than the full two-piece collar i think that would make up really nicely um and again especially for the summer or um you know i have got this earmark for charlie but don't tell him yet because his birthday is not till september but that could be on his birthday list so that's sketchy stripe in linen. Now, another one that I think would be really quite nice is our black and white gingham. So this has a tiny little bit of embroidery in it, actually. So I don't know if you can, can you see if I hold that right up there? There we go. Nikki says, oh, I'm just reading, your next pattern will be dog toys. <laughs> no, I don't think we need, to... no, I think, do you know what? I'm just gonna get her Crocs actually, because she really loves those. They're so chewy. And can you imagine? It might be quite nice, actually. I'd almost fancy chewing on a crock myself sometimes, just a bit of a stress buster, perhaps. Um, but this gingham, let's go back to gingham, let's go back to fabrics. It has got a tiny little bit of embroidery. Can you see that just going through it? Which I think is really pretty, actually. It's a lovely one. Um, black and white gingham, pure cotton. Um, we may end up doing a dog bed. Who knows? I don't know whether I'm going to get into dog coats, though. It's a bit too fiddly, isn't it? It's a bit like children's wear. It's a bit fiddly, really. But there we go. So I think, again, this will make up really nicely. Um, I don't know whether... No, I think I'd keep this as a shirt, actually, rather than a shirt dress, which I think is rather nice. Now, obviously, everybody needs to have a white 
linen shirt for the summer. This is our own linen. It's beautiful. Again, it's the same, you know, it's, um, it's 180 grams per square meter. GP, yeah, GSM, grams per square meter. That's right, that's fine. Um, so same as the um, Hunter's Green, but again, white. So this is what we've made our Eleanor shirt up in, and it just looks fab. This with a pair of um, Nell trousers or a pair of the Duchess jeans is just a classic combination, isn't it? It just looks beautiful, really does. So that's our white laundered linen. Now, if you're going for something a little bit more funky, perhaps, um, there's lots of running around going on upstairs. I'm hoping that's Olive behaving herself and she's not creating too much havoc upstairs. Um, oh, Kong toys, yes, Donna, they're brilliant, actually. Um, Kong toys with a bit of peanut butter on the inside. It keeps, yeah. That's used to keep our old dog happy for hours, actually. She would go mad for that. Um, now this, I think, would look really quite funky, actually, as a shirt. Um, I think this is brilliant. So this is Snow Leopard in Tencel. So it's a really nice soft one. So don't forget, Tencel makes up beautifully, even in something that requires a little bit more structure and support like a collar. It's just a question of making sure that you've got the right interfacing. And we have got the ultra soft Blyseline, however you say it now, Vileen, basically. Um, so this would work fantastically well with this. If you're unsure of which um, interfacing you want to use with your fabric, just pop a comment when you're um, ordering and we can make sure we match the, um, the interfacing to the fabric that you've got in your order. So that way we make sure that you've got the right one. So you don't want a stiff, crunchy collar. You want something that's gonna be nice and soft and supple, but that's still gonna have that structure to it that you're gonna need. So this, now, Sharon did call this Dirty Cat when we first arrived, but I think Snow Leopard is a little bit nicer. So this is our Snow Leopard Tencel, which is beautifully soft, actually. It's a really nice one. So this, I think, would make up um, at the risk of looking a little bit Bet Lynch, but I think in a modern, funky kind of way, I think we can definitely get away with it. So a little bit of animal print there. Uh, Sharon's popped up the links for it. That's good. Now, again, thinking, I'm gonna move these along a bit. There we are. So, stripes for shirts are a bit of a must, aren't they? They can be a little bit tricky, um, you are going to think of, need to think about where you want to put pockets and stuff like that. But again, with a, a vertical stripe, you could really make a feature of the back yoke. Or, oh, there she is. Yeah. <laughs> um, or have or any of the pockets because you could cut the yoke on the bias or the pockets on the bias. So you've got a slightly diagonal stripe. You could also be a little bit clever and actually split the yoke and have a seam down the back and have chevrons of stripes going into the middle which is quite nice that's you're going to need to be spot on to get that right but it does look amazing when you do so that's another one that you might want to think about this is beautiful and i think our shirt a shirt made in this would look fantastic it's linen again um and it is called black and gray striped linen really obvious that one black and gray striped linen it's a similar weight to our laundered linen, so it's a really nice one for shirts. And it's got that, it's got a dark grey and that very pale grey, along with, um, I wouldn't have said it was, I think it's slightly more off-white than bright white, which is actually quite nice. It tones it down a little bit, which is really nice. But again, that would look lovely as a kind of a, a bit more of a granddad shirt, or even as a kind of granddad shirt dress if you see what I mean lovely to wear on the beach in the summer with a nice pair of flip-flops or something like that I think that would be great actually so that is she says black and gray striped linen mix which I think is beautiful now if you're looking for something to act as a little bit of a contrast you want something that's going to have a smaller print really rather than anything too big and flowery this one is brilliant. This is our 100% cotton lawn and it's in a paisley. I think this is beautiful. Now actually, you could make up a shirt in this 
on its own and I think it would look great actually but if you wanted to have this as the contrast to a plain fabric this would look brilliant so you could use this on the inside of the yoke on the collar stand inside the cuffs on the button stand and it would give it a really nice bit of an individual kind of a, a look to it it's 100% cotton and it is called Grey and Cream Paisley Cotton Lawn. There we go, another really obvious one. Does what it says on the tin, but I think that's beautiful. In fact, I could, I could probably see Charlie in this as well, actually. So he might have another one. He might have another one for the summer. There we go, but I think this is beautiful. So again, you could put this with a, a white linen or our beautiful um, storm grey laundered linen would look really nice with this. Or, now we've got this one here, Again, this is a linen mix. Black and white melange. That's a really cool name. It's a cool word, a melange. I like that word. Um, linen mix. So again, you could have, it's a slightly more open weave. So a bit more of a casual kind of shirt. But again, that with the gray paisley would be a really lovely contrast. So that you've got that little bit to kind of brighten it up and lift it slightly, which is brilliant actually. So those two would make up really nicely. So this one again was black and white melange. Sharon's popped up the link already, which is brilliant. So, oh, Anne-Marie says, just made my son a shirt in the colourful paisley cotton. Oh, I know, the colourful paisley ones, I know. Festival paisley, those are lovely, aren't they? They look really good. Um, oh, Belinda says, would you need to wash it first? Which one, Belinda? Linda, uh, Linda says, oh, I can see trousers in the stripe. I know, actually, a pair of... Oh, now, actually, that stripe that I just showed you, the, the um, Palazzo pants from the Sewing for the Soul book would look amazing, actually, wouldn't they? They would look fantastic in that. <sighs> nice combinations going on. Nice combinations going on. So, now again, we've got Burnt Daisies. Now, again, that would look really cute as a little shirt, actually. I love this. So I don't know whether you've been able to see this. If I take that right close, you can see that those little daisies actually stand up. So they're kind of embroidered, which is really nice. So you get little 3D flowers on your shirt there, which is really cute. So this is called Burnt Daisies and it's cotton. It only comes in grey, unfortunately, but I really like that. I love grey anyway. It's one of my favourites. It's much more of a neutral, isn't it, really? So that would work brilliantly for a Cesario. Now again, whether you'd want to turn it into a dress or just keep it as a shirt is entirely up to you. Either would work brilliantly. Oh, let's just have a quick look. Ah, the Paisley Lawn. Linda, um, oh, Belinda, you could probably wash it first if you wanted to. It's not gonna shrink, but it will kind of get the dressing out of the fabric, if you see what I mean. Um, you probably, I probably wouldn't worry about washing it first. Um, Sometimes if you're making something that requires a bit of accuracy, like a shirt, you want to keep the dressing in the fabric because it just helps the fabric to behave a little bit better, if that makes sense. Um, if you have got something that is a little bit slippy, like one of the um, viscose rayons that I showed you earlier, you can always use a little bit of spray starch. So if you're making up the placket on the sleeve, for example, this bit here, or any of the collar pieces and you just want it to kind of behave itself and just do what you want it to, you can use a little bit of spray starch just to give the fabric a little bit of body. It will wash out as soon as you have washed the shirt, but it just helps you keep everything nice and accurate. So that might be a good tip to try. Now this is what we have used for our sample shirt here. It's lovely, it's a quite a, an orangey sort of brick red. But again, this is a cotton and linen mix. There we go, chili red, cotton linen mix fabric. It has, it's that two-tone kind of chambray look as well, which I think is really nice, particularly for this time of year. So um, I think this is a rather lovely one. Now, when we put the hack up for the shirt dress, we've actually made it in this one. And I think this is gorgeous. As a dress, I think this works brilliantly. So this one is called Summer Terrace. I should have remembered that, shouldn't I? 
and we've actually used a little bit of the chili red as a contrast so I think that works really nicely as well actually so you could have a pattern but then have the plane as the contrast if you wanted to which is another way of doing it again this is what's so fantastic about a particular about a shirt pattern you've got so many different component parts to it that it really lends itself to having um, a little bit of contrast a bit of interest um, and something else so you could if you wanted to do some stitched work on some of the pockets or the pocket flaps or um, or on the collar or something like that or a little bit of sashiko work or something whatever you want to do to make it yours I think is going to make it look amazing so summer terrace and chili red linen mix are a really gorgeous combination so bear those in mind now again another one that would work really nicely with the chili red is margot now this is a cotton lawn but again it's a beautiful it's got that lovely lots of different colors in it can you see it's got that little bit of pink in there as well actually um when will the hat be going up love a shirt dress d we're working on it at the moment we've got a couple of people off for various reasons so we're a little bit behind um but we are getting there so as soon as we get some of the photos back from Claire, we will be potting it all up into the studio. Now, because there's pink in here, I think actually it would go really nicely with our double gauze. Now, double gauze makes up beautifully as shirts. Again, it gives you that much more kind of casual over shirt sort of loose sort of feel which i think is brilliant but again it would work really nicely so again you've got those two together so we've got the double gauze and we've got margot so either way round actually i think would be really nice so you could have the whole shirt in the double gauze and just a little bit of contrast in the margot or the other way around again really nicely they go perfectly together i think or even the shirt dress in this i think would be great so more combinations which are rather lovely let's pop that down there oh we've got some more there we go whining puppy upstairs never mind never mind let's move these further down so again we've got Everybody loves a bit of red gingham for the summer. So again, this is similar. Can you, can you hear her? Can you hear her? The fuss she's making upstairs. Oh, never mind. Um, so this is a red and white gingham. Same as the black one, just red and white. But again, you can see it's got that little bit of embroidery in it, which is really nice, actually. Takes it off being like school uniform kind of gingham, which I think is really lovely. Um, but again, this would make up really nicely in a shirt. I would probably keep this, again, like the black one, I'd probably keep it as a shirt rather than... Um... Oh, it's Cesario. Cesario, the course for Cesario is up in the sewing studio, yes. And if you want to buy the patterns, then you can order those, um, just the paper patterns as a normal one, by, um, off the website. And we've got the download in the sewing studio as well. So that's cool. So there we go. Those are, that's the red one. Now we've got another stripe, another stripe, more fabrics. She wants her mummy. I know, I know. She's a lot of proper cling on. She really is. Worse than my daughter. But never mind. Luckily she's grown up now. Uh, pink stripe. Now again, this I think would work for blokes or girls actually or anybody in between. So this is beautiful. It is another cotton linen mix, which is nice because you've got the best of both worlds, really. You've got a little bit more of the kind of finesse of a, a nice cotton, but you've got that lovely softness of a linen and the breathability of the linen as well. I really like that. I could actually see my dad in a shirt like this. I think I might have to make him one, yeah. He used to wear bright pink trousers as well. I know it's really sad, isn't it? <laughs> Bless him. <laughs> but I think he might quite like this. So I might have to see myself making a shirt for my dad for Father's Day. Luckily, he doesn't watch, so it's fine. He won't know. Um, now, 
This is street art. Now, can you imagine? I love this. The graphic print of this, I think, is absolutely gorgeous. Look. Oh, it's amazing. I love this. Um, Maria says, has Olive seen the chooks yet? Just a little bit. She's been very up close and personal with them. In fact, she had white chicken pinned in a corner the other day when they got out. We might nearly have had chicken supper. It was not good. So, um, yes, she's been told off quite severely. I think she's beginning to understand that the chickens don't want to play. But, yeah, we're going to have to be reinforcing the chicken fence, I think. Anyway, back to the fabric. Street art. I love this. This is a, um, a very soft, light uh, cotton lawn. And I think it's beautiful. The colours in here are amazing. I'm going to show you again because it's just so beautiful. I love this. So again, this could look nicer, maybe more as a, a bit more of a formal kind of shirt with a really nice pair of slim trousers. I think this would look great actually, or even tucked into a pair of lovely wide leg Porsche trousers. It would look amazing. I love that. It's a very, very soft cotton. It really is kind of shirt or blouse weight, ideally. So that's street art pop that one down there now we're going back to another chambray we've got loads of chambres actually and I think they work they are just the perfect fabric for a shirt really because you can do so many different things with them um oops oh Pam you're watching me from Oban oh nice Look, ooh, very nice um Alice says you're, you're too scared stiff of our chooks well the chooks don't take any prisoners they're kind of thinking, do you know what? Come and have a go if you think you're hard enough, really. Um, so far, she's had a minor peck on the nose, but she's still game. Olive, that is. Um, I think they're going to give her a wallop soon and she'll soon put her in her place. <laughs> but there we go. Um, tucked in, if only, says Julia. <laughs> but there we go. Maybe a nice bit of cotton chambray might be just the thing. So this is very similar to the one that we've made the sample Cesario in, but this is much more of a pinkier kind of color. So it's a definite um, red and white, this one, but I love it. I think it's really gorgeous. Can you see that? I don't know. Lighting's not brilliant at the moment today. Hopefully, well, it looks actually, but it looks much better on my computer screen than it does on my phone, which is good. Uh, there we go. So that is, Linen Mix Chambre Magenta. So I think another another one would be really, that would be really nice actually. You could use that with the pink stripe actually, which would be another one nice one to go together. There we go. Actually, they work quite nicely too, don't they? Nice. But equally, if you wanted something, if you were going to use the street art as a little bit of a contrast, those two, again, would work quite nicely together. So you could have this on the inside of your yoke or the underside of your collar stand or anything like that. And that would be a really nice kind of contrast. So I'm going to put that over there because I'm running out of space down there. Now, again, if you want something that's a little bit more dressy, shall we say, then this is beautiful. This is a gorgeous graphic print. So this one is called Retro Geomex. It's a viscous rayon, so again, it has that nice lightness to it. But again, I think this would look amazing as a shirt dress. So you could have a proper, really nice kind of long shirt. There we go, if I show that. So you've got the, you can see all the colors in there. It's got black, a kind of a, a royal blue and the red, which I think is really nice. So flowers aren't really your thing. If you prefer something that's a little bit more geometric, this could be the answer to it. Now I think it actually works really nicely with our light blue. Now this is Linamix Chambre Cornflower, but I think the two of those actually work quite nicely together. There we go, I'm trying to hold them up oh, so you can see them together. It's the right tone of blue to go with the brighter blue in the Geomex, if you see what I mean. The, the colours kind of work together. Even though this is much paler, it's the same tone of blue. So again, it's a really nice combination to put together. So I'm going to put that one back. Again, if you want to, just let us know if you're choosing this fabric and we can pick out the violin 
the interfacing that goes with it for you because you're going to want something that's lightweight but that's going to give you that stability so we're on to the blues now this is beautiful this is a shirting cotton shirting and it has a very fine little blue pale blue pinstripe in it there we go if you can see that which is rather lovely it's the perfect weight for a shirt it gives it a bit more of a formal kind of traditional sh shirt sort of feel but i think it's a really lovely one again you could use this as a contrast to um for the chambray if you wanted to because again the two go really nicely together they are the right kind of tone of blue so if you want something that's a little bit simpler a bit plainer but just with something to lift it then this could be the answer if you don't want a whole shirt in it. It also goes really nicely with our Marlene. So this is a cotton lawn. Now again, I think this is so pretty. It would work really nicely as a shirt dress. But again, you've got that stripe. I mean, I kind of think actually the stripe and the print together look a bit jewels. You know, the clothing brand, Jules, not me. <laughs> but if you wanted to have that because you've got that big floral kind of feel to it. So you could have a shirt in this, but then have the floral side. Now, as me saying, go for ditzy. But actually, sometimes it's nice to bend or break the rules. So this actually is the inside of um, a contrast yoke. Again, would look really nice, actually. I think it would work beautifully. So you've got the plain chambray, a small stripe and a print. We've also got a proper stripe. So this is the same fabric as the pink one that I've just shown you, but in the blue. So again, you've got that double kind of stripe to it, but this again would work really nicely with the Marlene or with the narrow stripe or with the plain. I mean, look at those, they actually all work really nicely together as a gorgeous kind of combination, actually. Um, you could even have a kind of mismatch, patchworky type shirt if you wanted to, and have the sleeves in one fabric, the body in another, the back in another, the yoke in another fabric, but all kind of within the same sort of colors together, which actually could look really cool. So lots of different ideas. I'm gonna pop all of those at the back. There we go another stripe that I want to show you. Oops. Sharon says, oh, you've got a seven month old Bedlington Terrier. Oh, they're gorgeous. They really are, but mm, hands full. There we go. Just checking. I haven't missed anything. That's cool. Right. So another linen stripe. This one is a kind of I kind of want to call it a deck chair stripe, but do you know what I mean? But again, this would look amazing as a lovely big kind of overshirt. So you might want to think about the um, overshirt from the book for this. Or even a Hippolyta would look really rather nice in this. Um, just with a pair of really nice Berkies underneath for wearing on the beach. I love it. It's got a white and a kind of oatmeal kind of colour in it. So you can see it's more of a natural kind of colour really but that's rather lovely. So it's blue and natural stripe. Again, it's a linen. Oh, she's still going. Linen and cotton mix. So that's rather nice. I think that's lovely. Now, again, if you want something that's ditzy floral that you might want to use with something else, this is lovely. Now, is it this one? I think I have made, I've lost count actually, of the number of shirts I've made Charlie, but I think he has got one in this. It's a little bit more kind of James May from, um, my brain's gone. My brain has completely gone actually. Uh, what's the car program? <laughs> I can't even think about it now. With um, James May and um, Jeremy Clarkson, anyway. Uh, apparently he wears floral shirts and that's what Charlie's brother calls him when he wears this. But actually, I think it's really nice. It's um, a very lightweight, soft cotton lawn. And again, you can see it's just got a few little kind of details in there. But again, if you didn't want a whole shirt in this, it'd be a really nice one to use for contrast 
fabrics for, for those contrast details on some of the other plain ones that we've got, which is really cool. So it is called Slate Meadow Cotton Lawn. There we go, which is another nice one. Again, it's quite a, it is quite a masculine sort of design. I don't necessarily think, well, feminine, masculine, does it really matter? But I think this would be quite a nice one for a bloke to wear. So again, if you're thinking Father's Day, making up a shirt for your dad or some other per man in your life, then this would be quite a nice one to do. Um, I'm gonna have Top Gear, Nikki, thank you. Brain's not working. <sighs> I need more of the drugs, that's what I need. Um, top Gear, yes, everyone's shouting Top Gear at me now. Thank you, <laughs> I just couldn't think of it. It's really weird, isn't it? Dee says, I'm gonna have such a fast mode of you when Olive sees me. Oh, I know, she's like, nightmare. But there we go, right. Last few fabrics to show you. This is beautiful, I love this. Now, chunky check. It's a cotton linen, but it is a loose weave. It is quite a loose weave, and it has got a little bit of yellow in it. So I'm going to hold that up. There we go. So it's got a tiny little bit of yellow and a tiny bit of kind of soft, almost like aqua blue. I think it's beautiful. And this, again, as a shirt dress, I think would look amazing. You are going to want to need to match your checks. So it's going to be a slow sew. But I think that's a really lovely fabric. And again, it goes really nicely with this one, which is Linen Mix Chambray Blue. So again, and I quite like the, the selvage on this is quite nice as well. So you can actually, you could even use that as a trimming or something like that, which is rather nice. But this is lovely. This is a, more like a, a darker denim sort of blue. But actually the two of those just look really nice together. They really work, which is rather lovely. So again, you could have bigger shirt with some plainer contrast all the other way around. It works just as well, it really does. If you are looking for something that's a little bit more jazzy, shall we say, jazz hands kind of thing, then actually the folk art print, which is Vivid Vines in navy, again goes really nicely with the chambray. Again, another nice kind of combination. If you're looking at having something that's just a little bit more a kind of a, a kind of a quiet loudness, if you see what I mean. So if you want that little bit of pop of colour when you're using the contrast in your shirt then this would be a really nice addition actually. I think they would work really nicely together. It also, oh there she goes, she's been asleep before so now she's awake you see, this is the trouble. So actually the Vivid Vines goes really nicely with the Oxford Blue, there we go, I'm just trying to remember which colour way it was. This is a double gauze, and again, it just picks out the blue in the flowers there. If I pull those a bit closer, you can see those. So you can see the blue actually picks out in the flowers, which is rather nice. So again, if you wanted something just as a little bit of a contrast to a, a really nice, soft, relaxed kind of shirt, then the double gauze would work really nicely, actually. I think that's a really nice combination. But again, I could, I don't know, I could, I could see a guy wearing this, actually. I think it's a really nice, really nice pattern. Very cute. The last combination I want to show you, again, I think does lend itself to a little bit more of a masculine kind of, um, this is Prison Parade. Now, again, it's rather nice. It just has that little bit of detail whichever way around you want it to go, whether you want it to go that way. It looks more like Christmas trees that way. There we go. But it's a dark teal background and it just has that little tiny pop of orange and a little bit of acid yellow in there, along with black and white. So again, I think it gives you more of a, you get an overall kind of impression thing rather than having too much detail in this, which is rather nice. But it does go really beautifully with the Air Force Blue double gauze. So again, you've got that kind of combination with the two together, which looks really nice. So there we go. Now I've left my bit of paper reminding me of the other workshops over there. Um, 
so I can't actually see what else I'm supposed to remind you of. Thank you, Maddie, for writing it all down for me, though. Um, but I know we've got workshops available. We've got... I'm going to sit on the table now so I can actually see you. Um, we have got... Uh, we've got one place left on our lino printing workshop with Alex Almond, which is beautiful. The stuff they come up with is absolutely amazing. It really is. It's a lovely workshop to take part in. Um, we've also got some of our other sewing workshops coming up as well. Um, do have a look at our workshop calendar because we are planning more things as well. We've got um, pattern cutting coming up as well, which is brilliant. I don't know whether we've got, I mean, we might have even got one space left on the bodice actually. Um, but we've got lots of other... There we go. Oh, yes. Um, the other thing that we've got coming, or we've, got, we've had arrive, which you may want to include in your shirt are some beautiful little labels. Now it's gonna come out backwards, I know, but these are from Little Rosy Cheeks and they are so cute. There we go, lots of, oh, I love these. They've got some beautiful handmade, um, we've got Imagine What Else I Can Do, which is really cool. Perfectly Me, I Made This, I Can Make Anything that kind of thing. I love these. These are so cute and they are brilliant for just attaching in. Now again, you could be really creative with where you actually attach your little labels. They could go just into the side of your pocket here, which would be quite a nice little way to put them. Or you could even insert them into the side seam as well. Or you could make a proper feature of them and actually put them on the back of your inner yoke piece as well so loads of different things that you can do with those labels they're absolutely gorgeous um we've just had our diploma graduation as i mentioned earlier we have still got a few spaces left on the diploma if you are interested we're going to be putting up some photos of the graduation so you'll be able to see some people's work that they um, achieved and we will be sending out a little bit of a, a newsletter on Friday letting you know more information about how the graduation event went it was brilliant actually it was really lovely we were so lucky with the weather we had a little gazebo outside and everybody had their work displayed up and it was absolutely amazing it really was it was such a fantastic day and if you want to be part of that you can still join the diploma um, I think that's probably it for now can't think of anything else I need to remind everybody of. Um, no, other than we've got big things planned. Big things planned for this year. So stay tuned. Um, enjoy the sunshine if you are where you are. And I'm going to see if I can try and switch this off now because I'm doing this on my own today. Um, we've got links and stuff like that going on upstairs. Sharon's putting all those up in. But um, it's me. I am the camera operator today. So enjoy the weather. Weather and have a fantastic week. We'll see you next time. Take care.